Hey friends, this is the Miss Bulbers from our Half Acre Homestead with a tea break. Now I'm filming this on Wednesday night and you're going to get it Thursday morning because um, I cannot do a live stream today. My data is pooched on my phone and my internet is so bad I couldn't even get my mail to open. So you're getting me now in a tea break before I go to bed. <laughs> before I go to bed. Uh, I don't know if I told you on the live stream or not. I had a nice visit with Briar today from a safe distance. Me and my truck came at the door of the store and we had a nice little visit. Um, we woke up to snow this morning. And everyone's like, ah, this is April. Corona now snow. Come on, guys. I had, I wish I had it on video. Uh, one of our springs here, we had to get a uh, an excavator in here to dig out, dig us out. I mean, the path just to the truck was above our knee, was deep, is deeper than our knees. So I mean, and that was in April. So I mean, it's not a it's not a big deal. But there's so many of us out here just itching to get in the garden and get our like Aunt Jane says. If I can't dig in the dirt. You might as well just shovel it over if I can't play in the dirt. So uh, I'm hoping to be planting potatoes this weekend, snow or no snow. Howie brought me home some. Howie brought me home some. Uh, Wendy, what are you doing? Anyway, um, if I seem distracted, it's I don't know what's going on out there, but I hear it. So, oh, and you, did you like my tin foil castle? Well, it's not really a tin foil castle in the air. It's actually a tinfoil island. It's a plant island. <laughs> Howie brought my uh, asparagus and the rest of my leeks up from the basement because he said he needed more room in the grow tent for our other plants, which will soon be going out into the greenhouse. I'll tell you. Winifred! What, what are you doing? I'm trying to find your frozen the, the bottom of the freezer in the fridge. There's two black bananas. Excuse me. Tomorrow we're making banana muffins. And I keep forgetting to make the banana muffins or the banana red. And I, I asked Winnie, I said, if you can take the two black bananas out of the fridge freezer, put them in a bowl in the fridge, They'll thaw overnight, and I have to use them tomorrow. So I'll have to bake the muffins. But you couldn't find the bananas. It's all right. It's all good. <laughs> so what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So how we, I, you know, it's all well and good to say, you know, get your husband to stop at the store. But, you know, <sighs> Howie brought me, hold you, brought me home Yukon Gold seed potatoes. We don't eat Yukon Gold potatoes. So... I sent him to, because my chickens are coming. My chickens are coming. Hopefully this weekend I'll have six chickens. If how we can get a chicken coop organized for the birds. Um, a small chicken coop. And so he got me feed. And I said, since you're going to the feed, like the feed store, um, get me some white seed potatoes. White or red, like red canabacs or russets, right? White potato flesh. He comes home with something called cow gold or cow white. I have no idea what they are, whether they're good, early, late, don't know. So you know what? I'm gonna hedge my bets, and I'm gonna I'm gonna plant a box of Yukon golds and a box of whites because I don't know what's gonna can, what's gonna mash, what's gonna what's gonna right. If nothing else, I can make the Yukon golds into um, uh, frozen potato wedgies for the freezer. Right? So there's that. So I'm really so I'm gonna hedge my bets. I'm gonna plant some Yukon Gold in one box and some Cali Whites in the other. And I'm going to um I'm completely lost. So hopefully I'm gonna get my potatoes planted this weekend. I can't I've got enough loose soil, like unfrozen soil on the top of the boxes that I can fill my potato boxes as they grow while I wait for um, my, our friends, Jimmy and Judy Carroll. I always get 
like a uh, you know, a manure pile, well-rotted manure pile from them every year. And I use that to amend my soil. And I think that's why my celery was so, only two boxes didn't do well last year because they had too much drainage. So they weren't getting enough water. The water wasn't staying long enough for them to, to get up, right? So uh, I'm just so excited. If ever there was a spring that people were eager for getting outside and planting their gardens, it's this one. You know, I mean, I wrote a letter, I wrote a family letter today. I do like a monthly newsletter to friends and family all over. And, uh, and I was saying, if nothing else, when we come out of this on the other side, whether we like it or not, the world has going to change. This has been a global crisis. It's been a global crisis. And I think, I think at the risk of sounding political, I think there's, there, it's been a, a lot of horrific things going on in the world and seniors in, in homes and stuff. But I also think this could, oh, some good can come from this. Some good has got to come from this. Maybe, maybe this is a whole thing reset. Maybe this is just a preordained reset because we've all gotten too big for our britches when it comes to, you know, ordering parts from China and, and offshoring our business in Mexico and, and all these things. Maybe we are going to come to a point where we're going to realize that we have relied way. Now it's going to go one of two ways. It's going to be a global market from now on completely. And, and with, you know, piss on the NAFTA and all that stuff, it's going to be a global thing or countries are going to say, you know what? We just realized how, how much we rely on other countries. Uh, for things and we didn't realize it until a crisis because this was all a train wreck waiting to happen, especially with nursing homes, right? So maybe our countries are going to do the smart thing. Maybe the world's countries are going to say, okay, let's look after our industry. Let's bring all of our industry back home. Okay. And outsource what we cannot do for ourselves. That means bringing back all our auto uh, auto plants, uh, and if we can't, if we don't need all the auto plants, uh, the the automotive plants, then maybe turn some of them, turn some of them into something else, like manufacturing respirators or medical equipment. Let's turn some of those crops that are being plowed into the ground. Now everyone's going, what a waste, what a waste. Sure. I'd love, you know, I'd love a farmer to say, Hey, if you can get to my farm, there's 400 acres of green beans for you to can. What are you going to do with it all? P people are like, there's still that many people, but the demand, because there's, you know, there's everyday people like us who buy at the grocery store. But then there's the people who live and stay in hotels and live and, and eat it like eat out of, out of fancy restaurants every day because they don't have time to cook. There are people, you know, the cruise ships, the hotels, the restaurants, that uh, schools. Okay. That alone has decimated, decimated farmers because even if they could find a market, They've still got like, you know, even if they could find a market, there's no way to get it there. They can't just give it away. They can't say people come and take it because what would happen? You'd have a whole bunch of people in the place and they'd all get sick. You know what I mean? So I think what we should be thinking about as, as countries is resetting how we look after ourselves so that when there is a global crisis or borders have to be shut, okay, we're okay. We, you know, think about this. What is your country really good at producing? Italy tomatoes, boom, right off the bat. You know what I mean? And olives and, and Greece and all these things. What is your country? But don't just produce it for the world. 
produce for your country first and then export, right? I mean, you know, like everyone's going, oh, the textile industry in Canada, grow hemp. How many farmers' fields are, are going to be plowed under or not even planted with vegetables because they can't get them to the market this year or may not be able to get them to the market this year? What are our farmers' markets going to look like this year? Are they going to be glutted? Milk and eggs are being dumped and, and smashed. Why? Because there's nowhere for them to go and they won't keep. Because there's more chickens laying more eggs and cows have to be milked every day. So, maybe I'm rambling, okay, uh, maybe it's because I have a captive, captive audience and nobody's, you know, there's no chat for me to look at, but I honestly think there are people who will say, going back to nationalism, like looking after your country first, and then if you have extra, export it or trade it with other countries for that. Yes, it would make things cost more. Okay, it would make things cost more. Because this would be a whole new reset and everything has to be changed. But wouldn't it be worth it? Wouldn't it be worth it if you knew the can of mushrooms you took off the shelf at Giant Tiger was Canadian American or wherever Canadian I say giant tiger because it's a Canadian store wouldn't it be worth it if I go to giant tiger and I need mushrooms there are 99 cent mushrooms and there's a dollar 29 mushrooms or at least there were the last time I looked dollar 29 ones are from Canada I buy those first if they don't have them then I take the other ones because you know where the other ones come from they come from China all right, there is a problem, not with, um, it's too big. It's too big to be managed properly. So there's only two ways it can go. We can either go back to a nationalist. When I say nationalist, I mean um, looking after your own country first, or they're going to remove the borders altogether, and then we've got, the United Nations running the world with our prime prime ministers, our, our, our presidents, all these people are just going to be governors. It's almost there, right? So I don't know what's going to go. All I know is when it happens, we're just going to have to learn to roll with the punches. And um, I'm just really grateful that I've spent the last 10 years helping y'all learn how to can and dehydrate and garden and, you know, killing clean chickens and pigs and all those things because that's, I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful we went back to a back to basics, basics living style. Do we have pigs and goats and all that stuff? No. Am I getting six chickens for eggs? Yes, because we can't do all the heavy stuff anymore, but at least we have the knowledge of how to do it. Anyway, without sounding maudlin, this is the Miss and Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying, I'm really sorry you're missing your live stream today. Um, I've got tomatoes to can, banana muffins to make, and more videos to edit because I did can those blueberries and I did do a video. All right. I love you guys. I'll talk to you real soon. Take care. God bless. My data plan turns over at midnight tonight. So there will be a live stream on Friday. Okay. I love you guys. Take care. God bless. And remember, stay safe. Wash your hands and don't touch your face.